Hey guys, time for another installment of our Johnny Five robot build. Last time we made the tiptoe tube and some related parts. Now we're moving on to his rear caster wheel and A-arm assemblies. These articulate along with the track tip as you can see here in the animated CAD model. This time we're just making the caster assembly. We have some tapered roller bearings as well as a nice welded steel powder coated mainframe there and some stainless steel sheet metal work. And another big thanks to Terry at Input Inc. for hooking us up with these wheels as used in the movie. I think he said they're off of a 1950s Cessna airplane and almost impossible to come by these days. So he made sure that we got a couple out of his stash so that our robot could be that much more screen accurate. Starting off on the manual lathe, making this aluminum piece, which is called the bearing plug. This is the part that holds the tapered roller bearings for the caster shaft. Once that's done, I popped off the entire chuck with the part still in it and moved it over to the slant to retain the same setup concentricity with the three jaw. Here I'm showing how I like to set up the tool offsets on the slant. I'll take a skim pass on the OD and face and for the X axis, either some blue Sharpie or Dicom so you can see right when that tool starts to touch, then measure the diameter and enter that for your X offset in Pathpilot. For Z, I'll use a dowel pen as a feeler and creep towards the chuck in order to minimize any backlash error until I feel it just start to catch on the tip of that dowel pen. And then at that point, I know that my Z offset is the diameter of the dowel pen. Always really happy with how well this machine holds tolerance once it's set up like this. You easily get parts within a thou, usually better. Now that all of the lathe work is done on this part, we need to go over to the mill and put in some holes at 90 degrees around the part. So again, holding the part in my little three jaw chuck that I've modified to be able to hold in a 5C collet so that I can mount that in a collet block and do the pseudo fourth axis kind of work here in the vise like we did when we were making Johnny Five's tiptoe tube rings. Card here if you haven't caught that one yet. First boo-boo of the day, I probed my Z in the wrong spot, should have gone off of that flange, so this counterbore ended up being much deeper than it should have been. But the part will still function as is, so um, went ahead and carried on, drilled it, we'll still get plenty of thread engagement there. As you can see on the good holes, I'll always try to set my spot drill to the right height where it leaves a nice chamfer after the hole is drilled. Next we have a quarter inch steel plate that connects the caster spindle to the caster axle hub. So we're holding that using the super glue and tape trick card here for our video on that. Slotting that out using the Lakeshore Carbide Fireplug Ruffer. This was my first time using this tool and I really like the way it performed here.
Now back over to the manual lathe. This steel tube piece will be welded to that plate we just made and retains the aluminum bearing plug that we started off with. So first up, turning the bore of that tube to size. And then some blurry footage of me checking the size of that bore using these three-point digital bore mics. I really love these. They come in a set of four. I think these are in-size brand that we have. Then rough cutting the angle on the bottom on the bandsaw and putting it back in that 3 jaw 5 c setup to true up that angle on the mill and drill all of the corresponding bolt holes around the outside. This short steel piece is the axle bearing hub and it will be pressed and welded inside of that hole we made in that quarter inch plate. And the last major component we have to make is this tall aluminum upper spindle piece that retains the caster swivel shaft and mounts to the upper and lower A-arms that work in conjunction with the track tip assembly. Now 
Uh, since this is a very simple part and I've been feeling a little more confident in my manual lathe skills lately, I decided just to go ahead and make it entirely manually. It's going pretty well until bird's nest. So from that point, I changed up my feed direction to be away from the chuck just so I don't have a big flinging mass of chips and also sped up my feed rate a little bit to help break those chips up a little better. Had better chip control, still a little bit of trouble at the end, but it was manageable. Again, I needed to be able to hold this part in my 5C block for indexing on the mill. So I made up a quick and dirty aluminum tapered mandrel that I can drill into if I need to. Ended up being a hair loose, so I knurled it a little bit to bring the OD back out. Worked really well, a little bit too well, got it stuck in there right good. So this uh, this actually ended up being the inspiration for our slide hammer widget that Jared designed. Card here to that video if you haven't seen it yet. And there's a fair amount of stainless steel sheet metal here to box around the outside of it and hold the this little fender guard. So we cut all of these pieces out on the plasma, used laser cut chipboard templates, to mark out all of the bend points and using all of the tools at our disposal, much hammering and brute force, managed to knock together a pretty decent looking sheet metal assembly for all of these tail end pieces. More on this in the next video when we tackle the upper A arm. But all that's left for this caster is yet another assembly montage. That's all for now. Next time we'll be doing this upper and lower A arm, which again involves some aluminum and stainless sheet metal work, as well as some notched and welded tube for the lower A arm. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Not any bloopers on this one, that's sad. We have some angular, what are they called? So he, ma. Last time you saw us build this rear caster wheel. I think they ran off of there. Which is the bottom most this holds the track tick, this, this contains the track and the entire track tick. I can't say that word. I lied about the bloopers. We're gonna have plenty. And the entire track, <laughs> and the entire trap. I can't say it. What is wrong with my brain? Pointy, pointy, stainless, aluminum, bearing cup thingies. B-roll, B-roll, B-roll. B-roll for your B-hole. Behold the B-roll.